Why eating meat sparingly can help you to avoid cancer. Do you feel like everyone is getting cancer these days? I know my uncle has been affected, my friends from high school, friends from college, my friends' children. It's affecting so many of us. And the truth is that in the 1970s, only 10% of us were at the risk of getting cancer. But now in 2022, that risk is closer to 50%. Now, what can we do? What is in our power to avoid this awful disease? Truth is, about 10% of people who are affected by cancer, it's because of your genes. There's not much else you could have done. But for the rest of us, there is something that you can do to avoid this deadly disease. Eating meat sparingly can help reduce insulin growth factor one in your body. What is IGF-1? Well, it's a growth hormone that has been connected to uncontrolled cancer growth. And the more animal protein you're eating, the more IGF-1 is in your system. In fact, one study found that those individuals who ate a mostly plant-based diet for just 12 days had significantly less IGF-1 in their bloodstream. Methionine. Cancer cells are dependent on this essential amino acid. Your body needs essential amino acids to grow, but too much of certain amino acids can put you at a higher risk of cancer, and methionine is one of those. Now, plant foods have a lower amount of methionine, but animal foods have a higher amount. In fact, chicken and fish have the most amount of methionine. So if you want to starve cancer growth, then you want to reduce your intake of animal products so that you have less methionine in your system. Heme iron. Your body needs iron to be healthy, but too much of it can actually not be a good thing. It puts you at a greater risk of oxidative stress and DNA damage, which leads to cancer growth. So in order to reduce the amount of heme iron that you're exposed to, you want to reduce your amount of animal protein that you consume. HCAs and PACs. Now growing up, when we had meat at our dinner table, I loved it when it was burnt. <laughs> I love the burnt marks on meat. But now I've actually learned that that's not a good thing. In fact, those char marks or burnt marks, or even when meat is cooked at high temperatures or smoked, it increases your risk of cancer. And that is because it, it produces HCAs or heterocyclic amines. And you do not want those in your body. That's formed when meat or organ meat and muscle meat is cooked at high temperatures and it increases your risk of cancer. It's actually known as a carcinogen. So in order to reduce your, those amounts in your body, you should avoid eating meat overall or boil your meat. <laughs> That's the only way to safely consume meat and to reduce your amount of HCAs. n neuromimic acid. It's a big word, <laughs> but it basically means that it's a sugar molecule that's only found in animal food. Now, why is this important? Well, it can increase the, the growth of tumors. Your body sees this sugar molecule and attacks it. It sees it as a foreign invader. And so it attacks it and produces antibodies. And that increases inflammation in your body, which also increases your risk of cancer. So how much meat is safe to eat? Well, in order to answer that question, let's look at the people who have lived the longest in the world. Where are areas in the world that have pockets of the most centenarians, or people who live to be 100 years old and older, and who are healthy and enjoying life at that age? Those are called blue zones. They're anywhere from Costa Rica to Okinawa, Japan, to Italy, Greece, and Loma Linda, California. And they all share many things in common, but when it comes to diet, their main protein source is actually beans, not meat. And they do consume meat every once in a while, but usually about 90 to 95% of the time, they're eating a mostly plant-based diet. And because of that, they are living long and healthy lives. Now I wanna to speak to those of you who are actively fighting against cancer. The optimal anti-cancer diet is one that consumes zero or close to zero animal protein. Let's give your body the best chance possible. And not only reduce your animal food content, but increase your plant food content because plants contain thousands of anti-cancer compounds that will help you win your fight. So if you need help or if you are looking to get more accountability and support, I actually have a program that's just for you. I've developed a group coaching program where for six months we work with you as a group and talk about the type of foods that you want to be eating and the type of foods you want to avoid, as well as give you meal plans and everything else you need to set you up for success in your cancer journey. More information is below.